what's going on everybody and welcome back to another stimulus package update video so we're just going to get right into it yesterday i told you guys that i will be back today to tell you about all of the events that were going to transpire with the new stimulus package so as promised yesterday senate majority leader mitch mcconnell did pull through he came through with a new proposal now i was looking for a full bill um, but they didn't come with a full bill. Basically, it was Senator Mitch McConnell along with a couple of other senators whose names you're probably not interested in right now. But they all kind of just stood up there and they unveiled a lot of separate proposals. And that was a little odd, but I see what they're doing. They all had these separate proposals and they all sound pretty decent and they want to bundle them into a bill and they want to get Democrats on board. So let's get right into it. This new act is called the HEALS Act and that stands for the Health Economic Assistance Liability Protection and Schools Act. And basically, I know you guys just want to know what that means for you. So let's get right into that part. Basically, it means for you another $1,200 payout per American and $500 for each child. So that's about $3,400 for a family of four. $1,200 for mom, $1,200 for dad, $500 for each kid. But it's different this time because dependents will not be left out. So a lot of dependents were left out last time. You had people in your house that were 17 years old that did not qualify, college students that did not qualify. With the HEALS Act, that will be a lot different. Let's listen to what they had to say. Number one, we're going to continue the economic impact payments that were made in April and May. Uh, that means that the average family of four will, uh, can, will get another payment of $3,400. It includes just a few people that were uh, unintentionally left out of the last one, mostly dependents, college, and uh, adults that are somebody else's dependent. So as you can see it does look like it's a priority to get these payments out first because that was actually the first subject that was tackled in this briefing or in this proposal meeting. So that was the first subject that was tackled. So they seem really, really adamant about getting these payments out. They know that the American people want that money now and that we don't really want to hear anything else until they talk about the money first. So I'm glad they kind of tackled that first. Now the next thing that they went into was um, unemployment, which that is pretty much the second thing that we want to hear about. What's going to happen with people's money if they're not working, if they can't work, what's going to happen with that? So it was kind of like we talked about yesterday. They did say they will still be giving those federal unemployment payouts on top of those state unemployment payouts. However, instead of getting $600 a week, just like we discussed yesterday, it would be up to 70 to 75% of what your wages typically are. So whatever you were making before, now with this new proposal, you could expect to receive 70% of what you were making previously at your job or 75% of what you were making previously at your job. We extend additional unemployment insurance and remember that's on top of whatever the different 50 states give uh, and uh, on top of the economic impact statement I just gave so we want to continue to help the unemployed but we want to encourage work and we've learned a very tough lesson that when you pay people not to work what do you expect and so this payment will be adjusted so that we have additional payments to help people for approximately 70 to 75 percent of their uh, income. That's not me. I don't think so. <laughs> So it's kind of a sticky subject because some people are not ready to go back to work and they're still going to be willing to take that 70 to 75 percent of their wages and stay at home and be in a place where they feel safe as opposed to going back to work and feeling threatened or constantly feeling anxiety or on edge because of a pandemic. Another topic that was covered was the issue of student loans. Now we had student loan forgiveness but some people are worried that's about to expire. When all of these provisions went into place earlier in the year it seemed like when they were calling out dates like August, September, October these things will expire. 
it seemed like that was so far away. Now those dates are sneaking up on us and it's like, okay, so I could get evicted. I have to go back to work. My student loan forgiveness is about to run out. What is next? So we didn't expect time to fly the way it did and we're still in the midst of a pandemic. So what they're doing now with the student loans, let's take a look at this. In March, Congress agreed that it, the 43 million Americans who have a student loan would not have to pay a monthly payment until October the 1st. The payment would be deferred. You'd still owe it, but it'd be deferred. October 1 is just around the corner, so what we propose is, if you have no income, you have no monthly payment. If you do have income, then we'll change the student loan payment system so that you never have to pay more than 10% of your income after you've deducted necessities of life like mortgage and, and food. Now, I know a lot of people were concerned about back to school, kids going back to school. It's like, do my kids have to go back to school? And if they do go back to school, how do I know that they will be safe? How do I know that the school will have the proper provisions in place to protect my child in that environment? Will they have PPE for the teachers? Will it be safe at all? And so they have included an additional $70 billion for elementary through 12th grade. So 70 billion for elementary through 12th grade and then 30 billion for colleges. So that's a lot of money to put into getting these things right to make sure they're safe. So 70 billion and 30 billion, that's a lot of money. Hopefully that would be enough if this proposal turns into a bill and it's approved, then hopefully that would be enough to open schools safely. But there is no amount of money in the world that can change a parent's mind if they feel like their child is not safe or in danger. So it would take a lot more than 70 billion and 30 billion dollars to convince any mom to send their kid back to school. Second on school choice, there are about 135,000 public and private schools in the country, 35,000 private schools, 100,000 public, about 50 million children in the public schools, 5.7 in the private schools. Generally speaking, we think every child is equally important. And so what we propose is about $70 billion for kindergarten through the 12th grade and 30 more billion dollars for colleges. That amount of money for education is about the same as the House passed bill. So there could be an area of agreement. As Senator Blunt will say, we believe that every school should get some money. It would be about $1,200 per person on K through 12. Every school should get a third of that, uh, even if they're opening virtually. And the rest of that money should go to schools that are making an effort to open as much as possible with students physically present. There are many more expenses when you're physically present, buses, more teachers, more space, more protective equipment. We believe we ought to pay, pay for that. Um, on school choice, uh, Senator Scott has a bill which he will discuss, and I'm a co-sponsor of that, which would uh, give parents more choices of all schools. And child care, uh, child care centers are having a hard time staying open because they have less revenue, fewer students, and there need to be more safe environments for child care. So we talked about a few topics today. What do you think about the money for back to school? What do you think about sending kids back to school? $1,200 per American, is that a decent amount of money? Is that fair? $500 per dependent, are you cool with that? Is it just like, show me the money, I need to catch up on some things? How is that for you? And what about that unemployment? Are we feeling that at all? All right guys, let me know in the comments and I'll see you on the next stimulus update video.